Okay, welcome back friends. Day three, it is another scorcher, and I'm going to try to keep this brief. We had our day limited a little bit by fire drills, and by just, in general, the anxiety of all of the heat. But hopefully, you still got something out of today, I'm going to work you back through today. Okay, when you came in, you had another fire starter on the board. The fire starter, what are some qualities of a great writer? What are some qualities of a great writer? And explain why these are important. Now we went through, and I organized your list for you. I eliminated all of the common terms, and I, I collected them all in alphabetical order. All the stuff that we came up with, all the great ideas you guys had in your fire journals, we came up with 105 qualities. 105 qualities of a great writer. That's amazing. But when we're going through that list, we notice something about those words, those qualities, those things that a great writer is. Who a great writer is. You know what we notice? We notice the same things that makes a great writer. They also make a great person, a great friend. Oh, now we got thinking. Now we got code talking. We connected a little bit. We organized. We deep processed our ideas. And we spoke about the fact that those the reason that those overlap is because it's about one thing. You see me do that in class a lot. You know that that means connecting. Connection. We make the best connections with friends. The people we trust the most. The people who have the qualities that we love, that we want to have. Those are the people we surround ourselves with. Those are the people we feel the most trusting to open up to, to connect with. Well, that's not, that's not a coincidence, guys. That's not a coincidence. The greatest writers know exactly what audiences are looking for to connect to, and they use that. They become that so that they can get their ideas that they've already code talked through out to you. And when you do that, and you can make a meaningful connection with an author, that's the purpose. That's the purpose, making a connection. Yeah, P-I-E, yeah, persuade, inform, entertain. Really? An author's purpose, connection. An author's purpose is always going to be connecting. So a good author knows that they need to reach out to you in a way that's going to connect to you. Well, all of those 105 qualities, we distilled them down. And we started taking notes on the writer's dispositions. The writer's dispositions. We remember from class that dispositions is a fancy word for qualities, stuff we strive to embody. See, because here's the problem. A lot of times when we're in school, we focus too much on the what, the product, the stuff that comes out at the end. Well, guess what? The product is important, but more important is the who. If you want to be a great athlete, what do you do? You go watch a great athlete. You go see who he or she is. You go follow what they do, what makes them who they are, and you strive to embody that. Any profession in the world, it doesn't matter. If you become who that profession is, if you become somebody, if you follow somebody who is successful in that profession, and you take a look at who they are, and what they strive to embody, and you go after that too, you can be exactly what they are. See, the who is the most important thing, the person is the most important thing, and yet, we get really caught up on, well, did I get a good grade on that assignment, because I want to make sure, no, 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 no. Who we are as writers, who we are as learners, that's what's important. So what I'm trying to teach you today, and what we got through today, we got through three dispositions of a quality writer. Courage, understanding, perseverance. We talked about questions that we asked our, ask ourselves when we're being courageous, when we're being understanding, when we're being perseverant. And we talked about the actions that are associated with those qualities. See, when we talked about, does a writer have to have courage a couple of days ago? Some of you said yes, some of you said no. My guess is that if you said no, you're already courageous. That's awesome. Because guess what? It takes courage to put yourself out there. Why? Haters going to hate. It doesn't matter how good you are at something. I told you the other day about the conversation, oh, LeBron James is doo-doo. No, he's not. He's great. But because some people don't like him, they hate him. That happens to me in my second career as an actor. A reviewer comes, it's their opinion, they don't like something that I did on stage, they're going to disperse that 
to thousands of people. Thousands of people are going to read that I'm not any good just because of one person's opinion. So it takes courage for me to keep getting back up on stage knowing that that might happen. Same thing is going to be true of you as a writer. You may not connect with every audience member. And there may be somebody standing by to say, you know what, they're terrible. That person's terrible. They're no good. Their work is no good. But guess what? If you are following through on who you want to be, and you make a goal for yourself of who you want to be, I want to show courage this year in my writing. I want to make sure that I'm pursuing understanding, learning, being open to learning through criticism, through my audience, through suggestion. I want to make sure that I am persevering. I want to make sure that I'm going to follow through on my ideas because they're quality ideas. They are quality ideas. If you strive for a goal of who you want to be as a writer, as a learner, in this classroom and in the world, you're never going to fail because if you're making progress and you're putting in the effort to do that every day, it's going to happen for you. It's going to happen for you, but you need to know who a writer is before you can do the things a writer does. That's what the focus was on today. We're going to continue that tomorrow. I do want to make one mention. Twelve years ago, our nation endured a horrible attack and a horrible tragedy. And I would be remiss if I didn't point out the fact that the thing that we should all take from that event is that we need to be super grateful for everything we have and for the gifts we've been given our family, our well-being. Um, we need to be grateful of all of that because it can be taken away from us like that. And I'm appreciative of you guys. I'm appreciative of my education. I'm appreciative of my job. And if no other day, today, appreciate what you have and how good you have it because there are people who don't get to spend time with their families anymore. There are were consequences to the actions of 12 years ago today. And I want you to take from this a commission from me. Appreciate what you have, the blessings that you've been given. It's my wife's birthday today. And it's a powerful reminder to me just how grateful I am to have her and how much of a blessing she is in my life and my entire family. So please, be grateful for stuff. Not everybody has all of this stuff that we have, all the wonderful stuff that we have in this country. Be grateful. Say you love somebody today. Say I love you to somebody. Make sure they know you're appre you appreciate them. Because that's what today is all about. Your education is part of that too. Be grateful for your education. Come in today, tomorrow, every day, and work towards making your better, or your best, better every day. Your best is good enough for today. But tomorrow, your best better be better. Have a wonderful day, guys. Thank you for coming by. Any of the notes we filled out are right below this post. Your homework is right below this post. Have a great day. Thanks for coming, and thanks for doing your homework. Have a good day.